let's just show the picture to begin with. Uh, most of the Republican presidential candidates were there. Donald Trump was not. Jim Gilmore, the former Virginia governor, was not. And the three senators were not, Rubio, Cruz, and uh, Rand Paul, because they had to stay back for votes. But look at that picture there. They all lined up on the stage for this forum. Then they took questions. It was, I think the one thing we learned is when you have so many people, it's really hard to get a lot of time to distinguish yourself. Let's listen to a little bit of the flavor. Jeb Bush, Scott Walker, Chris Christie here, trying to convince people, give me a look. My dad is probably the most perfect man alive, so it's very hard for me to be critical of him. In fact, I got a t-shirt that says, uh, at the Jeb swag store, that says, I'm the, um, I'm, I'm the, I, my dad's the greatest man alive. If you, if you don't like it, I'll take you outside. I'm a new fresh face versus a name from the past. I'm someone from outside of Washington with a proven track record. But some people observe this say that, you know, you, your best time to run may have come and gone. Jack, you saying I'm washed up? No. Oh, God. No. Listen, no one should run for president of the United States so they can look in the mirror and say they're ready. And when folks approached me four years ago, I was really honored. But I looked in the mirror and I said, I'm not ready. So they appeared one at a time, even though we had the class photo there. But because there were so many of them, time was short. Did we learn anything that carries over? Obviously, they're not next to each other, so they're not throwing th you know, bars back and forth at each other. But number one, I think the premium is you get so little time. If you have something to say, make sure you say it. Yeah, Jim, you got to work on that clever line uh, about your dad and the T-shirt. Uh, and, and I think for Scott Walker, he's got to be a little bit more lively. I think he, uh, he has this sort of kind of Midwestern laid back uh, appeal on TV that's hard uh, to sort of make out. Uh, so I think they've got some work to do. They got to work on their lines. They got to kick off the road. It was a parade of talking points, and it's part of a bigger problem. New Hampshire voters didn't learn anything about the candidates there, and they're not going to learn much more on Thursday. What's happened to both Iowa and New Hampshire, places where the voters traditionally really dug down on the character of the men and women running and the issues that are involved, right now it's all about the polls, it's all about the big national debates, and it's kind of nationalized what really needs to be a, a localized uh, a, a deep, deep campaign. Well, it's one of the reasons that event was held. Uh, some of the forces in New Hampshire, including the union leader newspaper, saying, hey, wait a minute, we don't want the National Party running the debates. We want to try to do something. We'll see, we'll see the impact going forward. Uh, let's listen to a little bit about, where, again, as we look to the debate, we know Donald Trump will be at center stage. We know he's leading in the polls. And we'll get to some of those numbers in a minute. One of the big questions is, will people attack him? Will they just try to stay away from him? Will they try to make their own points? One of the big issues always in Republican politics, and Trump has put this even higher, is immigration. Listen to this little exchange of differences of opinion at last night's forum. Those that have overstayed their, their visas, you go find them, you pick them up, and you send them back wherever they're from. If they're law-abiding, God-fearing folks, uh, they're going to have to pay a penalty uh, towards legalization, and they'll have to wait. If they violate the law, they're going to have to be deported or, or put in prison. Th this is an area where the, the leading candidates have some disagreement. Uh, and we talked a little bit about this last week. Uh, Trump has said, round them up, throw them out, but then let them back in on an expedited basis, which I don't really think makes a lot of sense. If you're going to round them up and throw them out, if you want to defend that position, defend that position. Uh, but to have mass deportations and then say, well, we took all the time, the effort, and the money to do that, and now because you didn't commit a crime when you were here, you get the front of the line, seems a little backwards. Is this going to be one of the flashpoints? I think it will be one of the flashpoints, and I think one of the ways that you distinguish these candidates is in terms of their rhetoric. Trump has obviously uh, been out front with bombastic rhetoric, talking about Mex Mexican uh, illegal immigrants as rapists, uh, and other folks are like Jeb Bush, who are much, more, uh, you know, sort of like the kinder, gentler approach to immigration. Right. Uh, and then you saw Kasich somewhat on that spectrum, too, with Bush. Uh, Perry obviously isn't going to be there, it looks like, according right. to these uh, polls, but we know that that got him in trouble last go-round. Right. Yeah, fortunately, because there are so many leaders of the Republican Party who are playing to the voters' worst instincts, their, their fear about the other. It's hard for somebody to take a reasonable position um, in the Republican field, and it's, it's, it's an issue that if you look at where this country is going, the Republican Party is stampeding towards irrelevancy. Right. They don't figure out how to handle this issue. With Latino voters, with the demographics oh, yeah. of the country, the, the, you can't win a national election with white, just white votes. And, and it just you, doesn't and work. And you can't get right. the Hispanic right. vote by right. starting out by saying we don't like you.